I'm putting Windows 95, yes I am, yes I am, this is gonna be so cool. Hey, how's it going everyone? This is White Pointer, and a while ago, back when I had a horrible microphone, I did a video on MS-DOS exclusive side-scrolling platforms. It's one of the earliest videos on my channel. Uh, I've got a lot of positive feedback from that video, so I decided to do a video themed around Windows 95 and Windows 98 games. This was a golden era in PC gaming, as Windows 95 and later 98 provided developers with many tools to create games that simply were not possible in DOS, not the least of which was DirectX and full support for 3D hardware technology. But this video isn't just about any old Windows 95 and 98 games. Everyone knows the classics, so I want to dedicate this video to some hidden gems, some games that are often forgotten, but nonetheless still great. I've really enjoyed this trip down memory lane, and I hope you do too. Are you ready? Let's get rolling! Most gamers would know about Lemmings, but not quite as many would remember Lemmings Paintball, a quirky, fun and well-executed spin-off of the main Lemmings series, released in 1996 by Visual Science and published by Psygnosis. I got this game in a compilation package on the disc with the original Lemmings, and I'm not aware if it was ever released in other formats. This game plays very differently from the other Lemmings games. The view is switched to an isometric camera, the Lemmings don't move unless you tell them to, and they carry paintball guns. The objective of each level is to collect one or more flags that are located in the level, and along the way you'll need to solve some puzzles, navigate some traps, and shoot hostile Lemmings who also happen to be carrying paintball guns. Just one shot will dispose of them, but just one shot will spell the end of your lemmings too, so you need to be careful and plan out your strategy. You'll control up to four lemmings in a given level, which you can do one at a time or all together. Each lemming can only carry one flag each, so depending on how many flags are in the level, you may need to make sure that all of them survive. Just like the main series games, levels progressively get harder and are grouped into four categories, fun, tricky, taxing and mayhem. And just like the main games, the early levels are a cinch, but the later levels can get brutally difficult. Some trial and error is definitely required as you learn the level layout and positions of enemy lemmings. Many puzzles involve needing to use multiple lemmings in tandem, for example telling one to flick a switch while another stands on a moving platform. The controls are simple, left click to move to a location, press a switch or collect an item, and right click to fire the paintball gun. The Lemmings have a bit more of a brain in this game compared to the main games, but they'll still mindlessly follow your direction even if it means walking into a lava pit, so you need to be pretty precise when you're telling them where to go. Since you can't swing the camera around, it also sometimes makes it difficult to know if a drop is safe or not. And the Lemming death sound, if they fall into a hazard, will haunt you, and if you get any enjoyment out of that, you are a bad, bad person. The isometric view does take some getting used to, but once you're comfortable with it, there's a lot of fun to be had here, and the soundtrack is pretty amazing too. Lemmings Paintball also supports network multiplayer if you can find someone else who has the game. Unfortunately, this is not seen or released on any digital platforms yet, but the good news is discs are reasonably affordable and relatively easy to find, and the game has no trouble at all running on Windows 10 natively, so if you still have an optical drive, you should definitely check it out. The PC has never had a shortage of first-person shooters, and with so many released for the platform over the years, it's probably understandable if a few slip by your attention. So here's a good one you may have missed, Shogo Mobile Armor Division. This was actually created by Monolith, after they made Blood, which was the game that really put them on the map, but before they made the smash hits Fear and Condemned Criminal Origins. Released in 1998, it was their first fully 3D game, and the first to use their Lift Tech engine. The game actually has a kind of anime style to it, despite coming from a western developer. In a unique twist, the player not only walks around on foot like most FPS's, but they also pilot a large mech. The mech is mostly used in large outdoor areas, while you're mostly on foot in indoor locations. When you're in the mech, you're powerful and you feel like you can take on pretty much anything, but when you're not, you're incredibly vulnerable and can die from just a couple of shots if you're not careful. Luckily, most enemies you'll encounter on foot are just as weak to bullets as you are, though a lot of them have a nasty habit of hiding around corners or on upper platforms where it's difficult to see them, and they'll open fire on you the nanosecond they spot you. In short, you'll enjoy being a bit reckless and causing lots of big explosions in the mech, but you're going to need to be more subdued and methodical when you're on foot. 
The mech can also transform into a vehicle mode for quick movement, but there doesn't really seem to be many places that really take advantage of this. Wait, transform into a vehicle? Isn't that the same as... Oh, Decepticons? Aha, I see what you did there. On that note, you'll probably find a few signs like this one during the game that will make you laugh. It is actually quite funny in places. The last thing to say about this game is that it's reasonably short, lasting about 8 to 10 hours, and that's if you take your time. But it does have a branching path in the latter stages that results in multiple endings, so that increases the replay value a bit. Shogo Mobile Armor Division is available on GOG, which is probably the best way to play it, and this version runs more or less fine on Windows 10. In 1998, Team 17, the developers behind such games as World Rally Fever and Worms, decided to get in on the pinball action and release a pinball game with publisher Microprose for PC, with tables themed after, well, World Rally Fever and Worms. And honestly, for a studio that had never developed a pinball game before, what they pulled off with Addiction Pinball was pretty remarkable. The physics, oh man, the physics were amazing in this game. The ball moved so fluidly and realistically that it blew virtually all the competition off the planet. The two included tables, World Rally Fever and Worms, were also rendered in very realistic full 3D, and each one had unique goals and special modes to trigger based off the inspired game. World Rally Fever had you constantly hitting specific sequences of ramps to perform stunts and overtakes as you increased speed and completed race laps, whereas Worms had you picking up weapon crates and scoring kills on Worms by completing specific objectives, including a couple of video modes. One where you actually control a super ship. Both tables had specific missions to complete to maximize your score and increase your bonus, multi-ball modes, and fantastic soundtracks. The game offered five viewing angles, including a view that rotated the table horizontally across the monitor, so if you had a monitor that could swivel 90 degrees to sit vertically, you could play the game almost like you're looking at a real pinball table. The only real points that could be nitpicked about this game was that it only included two tables, while most other games at the time included at least three, and it didn't provide many options to tweak the experience exactly how you liked it, including adjusting the number of balls each player had available. But when the simulation is this good, those really are pretty minor nitpicks. Apparently there was actually supposed to be a third table themed after another one of Team 17's popular games, Alien Breed, but this was cut at some point. If you're a fan of pinball and Team 17's games, you definitely owe it to yourself to check out Addiction Pinball. This too isn't available digitally to date, but discs are easy enough to find, and it runs natively on Windows 10 perfectly. Do you like real-time strategy games? Then you'll like Submarine Titans, made by an Australian developer who are unfortunately long dead, named Lip Studios, and published by Strategy First. At the time of its release in 2000, it was sometimes called the Starcraft Under the Sea, but that's a pretty unfair comparison. The game does have three playable factions, like Starcraft, including an alien race, and you need to gather resources, build structures, research upgrades, and train units to wipe out the opponent, like Starcraft, but that's about where the similarities end. As you would expect from a game called Submarine Titans, the game is set underwater, with the majority of your units being submarines of some description, whether they are construction subs, transport subs, combat subs, or special ability subs, essentially this game's version of spellcasters. It's a 2D game, but has nicely detailed and animated 3D looking visuals that still look pretty good these days, especially if you increase the resolution. In a unique gameplay mechanic, your units can actually change their depth in the water to one of five different levels in order to dodge or attack the enemy. This can work against you as much as it can help you though, as your units may not attack at all if they're not at the correct depth, so you need to pay attention to what's going on. If the normal speed is a bit too slow paced for you, you can always speed it up, which is exactly what I did. There's a pretty high learning curve to the game, because there's multiple different resources you need to manage, and a lot of different units in each faction that have specific purposes. The UE is also laid out a bit differently to other games, with the minimap in the middle, unit specific commands on the left, and building specific commands on the right, so that takes a bit of getting used to. The campaigns of each faction are also pretty challenging right from the outset too, even if you select weak AI, and even veteran RTS players might fail a few times. If you expect to start out simple and gradually build up, you'll be in for a shock because they ramp up in difficulty very quickly. You actually need to plan out a strategy and think about how you'll tackle the objectives, as opposed to just building a massive army and attacking. 
As you progress each campaign, you do get awarded by pretty cool looking cutscenes, which is nice. The game also supports network multiplayer. So the three factions in the game are the White Sharks, Black Octopi and the Silicons, the last of which is the Alien Race. By the way, how cool are these menus? They look awesome! The two human races play quite similarly to each other, but the Silicons are, pardon the pun, another kettle of fish altogether, having their own resource model, different unit types and a unique tech tree. But really, how can I pass up a game with a playable faction called the White Sharks? They aren't actually sharks, but I'll let that slide. If you're a fan of RTS games, you really should check it out if you haven't before. It's actually superior to other games at the time in some areas too, such as not having a unit selection limit, being able to increase the resolution, having no real issues with pathfinding, being able to trade one type of resource for another, and having the option of using an AI assistant to control the more tedious aspects, such as resource gathering and defense. It's not without its flaws, for example, all of your units have the same voice, so it's sometimes hard to differentiate them. Your units can still be pretty dumb at times, and you can visually lose sight of them behind terrain in the pseudo 3D world. But the positives substantially outweigh the negatives. Submarine Titans is available on GOG and Steam and runs great in Windows 10, though you may need to tweak a few settings first. I'll finish this off with another Australian made game, cause I'm biased that way, but this time it's a racing game. Power Slide by Ratbag Games and published by GT Interactive. This one actually received a lot of critical acclaim when it was released back in 1998, but it's gradually become forgotten over the years, which is a real shame because it still holds up incredibly well. Power Slide was praised for its realistic physics as you drove high powered four wheel drive vehicles around spectacularly rendered off road tracks in a post apocalyptic world. There's six main vehicles and over 30 drives to choose from though you'll need to complete the various championship difficulties in order to progressively unlock them all. The drivers themselves don't seem to make any real difference aside from the vehicle's colour, but all of the vehicles handle quite differently, so you'll want to experiment to find the one that best suits you. Another feature this game was lauded for back in the day was its implementation of force feedback, which, keep in mind, was still a pretty new technology in 1998. It was based off the game's physics engine and changed depending on the surface you were driving on giving you, as the player, valuable information to get the most out of your drifting and sliding. And speaking of track surfaces, Power Slide has a lot of them, from road, to sand, to dirt, to mud, to snow, to ice. The tracks snake through both indoor and outdoor areas without any kind of visible barriers to stop you veering off. While veering off is usually bad, it isn't always the case, as you can sometimes find a shortcut or a cheat code that's hidden off the beaten path. Be prepared to put your gaming credentials to the test with this one though, because Power Slide is hard. Super hard. While you shouldn't have any trouble winning the Novice Championship once you've got the hang of it, and Advanced gives you a good challenge, the jump in difficulty to Expert and then to Insane is massive. Not only do the opponents all drive faster, but they are far more aggressive too, not hesitating to smash into you to try to push you off course. It's totally relentless, and honestly, you're fighting this aspect of the AI just as much as their speed. If you can beat the expert and insane championships, you truly are a gaming monster. Power Slide is available on GOG and Steam, which is great, but even if you get these versions, you still might need to jump through some hoops to get it to run nicely on Windows 10. It's worth the trouble though, because it's one of the best racing games made during that era. So that's it, there's 5 great games for Windows 95 or 98 that you may have missed and are definitely worth checking out. If you've played these games yourself, share your experiences with them in the comments below. I plan to make some more videos like this moving forward, so if you have any suggestions for games you'd like me to cover, let me know. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video, and don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with my content. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. What? No, 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 no! No!